Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, I'd like to show you today how I get started with a card base and I'm going to throw in a little bit of mixed media. Now, this is ideally for people who haven't tried much mixed media before. Want to start adding a little bit of ink and other mediums to your cards? This is a really lovely technique for you to get started with and it's very, very easy. All you need to have is something like a die cut. Uh, I'm going to run through all the other supplies, but hopefully as a crafter, you've got most of these in your stash already. Now, I'm going to be focusing on one particular die today and that's this beautiful wreath outline die this comes from the uh, textures range called spring awakening it's my latest launch and it's called foliage wreath it actually comes with a really pretty stamp as well that overlays or underlays either way but we're focusing on the die section so I've already cut this from brown cardstock twice then I've got some Distress Oxides. Now you can do this technique with inks, but I find it definitely works better with Oxides instead. And I will explain the reason for that as I work through the technique. I've also got some clear embossing powder and some clear embossing ink here. And I've also got some water, both in a mist bottle and in a brush pen. And lastly, and really importantly, watercolour cardstock. Because if you're going to be applying mediums to cardstock or paper, you need something quite heavyweight that's that's not going to warp and buckle underneath all of that moisture. You want it to stay as straight as possible, but also you'll find that the inks and the water will react differently on different papers. I will add a link to the watercolour cardstock that I use. It's a beautiful A5 pad um, filled with lots of sheets. It's available on Amazon, so I'll make sure there's a link down in the description for you to follow if you'd like to take a look at this. So let's begin with our die cut. Now this doesn't have to be foliage or flowers or anything like that. It could be a butterfly that you want to try this technique out with. I just think this is stunning because it's got the perfect amount of detail to show up. Um, it's really, really beautiful and it can be used for any season as well. So I've die cut this from brown cardstock. It's around about 250 GSM cardstock and I've cut it twice. And I've then actually used a, a permanent adhesive to stick the two layers together this has given me a slightly deeper die cut um, obviously I wouldn't be able to cut through 500 GSM cardstock if I even had it so by layering the two together spray adhesive is perfect because you capture all the little details now they're glued together I'm going to just apply some clear embossing ink to these just over the top so decide which is the front and I'm just going to press down you don't need to be too particular for this one uh, if you are following along with my colourways because I'm going to be using brown as you can see for the wreath and then I'm going to be using lighter colours, the greens and the yellows for the inks in the background. Now if you decide that you want to use a white wreath and use it almost as a complete resist um, you can do that but I would suggest being a little more precise with how much embossing ink and powder is on to make sure you don't have any areas of the wreath that are not resisting with the embossing afterwards. So I think I've got pretty much full coverage of the ink on the wreath there. I'm just going to pop this into a folded piece of scrap cardstock, put some clear embossing powder all over. So do the centre section. This is just the easiest way for me to apply embossing powder. There are trays out there that you can use as well, but I find this just as simple, cheap, and I can reuse my cardstock usually. So just dipping it in there, applying more, and then I can really easily use the fold in that cardstock to put it back into the tub afterwards. So I've got a little bit there. And this way also I can clearly see if I missed any areas too, because it's all gone kind of white there, kind of frosty with the powder. If I've got any areas that are looking bright brown, the dark colour of the cardstock, then I know I've missed them with the ink and I can go back over them later. I'm just going to take my heat tool now and set this powder. Now once this is dried, you'll have yourself a glossy looking die cut. It's beautiful. So I'm not going to stick that directly onto my watercolour cardstock just yet. I'm going to add my colour first, but I'm going to use this as a guideline for where to add my colour. I don't want to fill the entire back panel with colour. I want to leave some of the white or the ivory colour through. I'm going to start with yellow because this is kind of going to give the impression of a little bit of sunlight coming through. So I'm using squeezed lemonade. 
Now I did mention before that I'm using distress oxides, you can do it with ink, but I prefer oxides. The reason for this is because with oxides there is a pigment to them. So we've got a dye base, but we've also got pigment in there. And it's the pigment particles that will sit on top of the paper and the dye will soak in. Now where the pigment sits on top and then you spritz your water and that kind of reacts, um, that's where you get different looks to if you had a distress ink where the dye will soak in because when you spritz it with water all that's going to happen in that case is it's just going to kind of almost bleach the colour. We want to move that colour around, we want to be able to play with the pigment sitting on top so for this reason I'm using oxides and you'll see the effect that we get. We'll also get oxidisation which does make this look a little bit cloudy, a little bit frosty as well, which mutes down those colours and makes this wreath really stand out. I'm now going to saturate this with water, keeping everything else out the way. So I'm going to spritz it. You'll see the oxidisation almost straight away. You'll see the effect that the water has on the distress ink and oxide. But I'm going to allow that to move around together. So I'm going to use a mist bottle and immediately you can see the lovely effect that's happening there. Now it's important that this next part is completely dry because otherwise when you adhere your wreath it's just not going to stick to damp cardstock. So I'm going to take my, um, my adhesive again, this is my permanent adhesive, I'm not using repositionable and I've got a scrap of cardstock here that I can spray this onto. So I'm going to flip it over, spray the adhesive on the reverse and make sure I've got a really good covering and with spray adhesive, make sure you're ventilating your room, opening a window, even take it outside if it's a nice day and do it out there. Be aware of the spray where it goes as well because you do get a fine mist that is really tacky after a little while. So if you do it in something like your waste paper bin, you will probably get it on your floor and around the edges of the bin as well. So I go on scrap cardstock and I make sure I'm on one of my craft mats that doesn't matter if it gets a little bit sticky. Now with this I'm going to give it about 30 seconds or so to go tacky before I stick it down. Uh, that's recommended on the tin but I find it definitely does make a difference otherwise it just doesn't stick quite as well. So I think we're kind of getting, that's probably about enough time. I can see that I've got some white areas on here. So now I can stick this down and make sure that is stuck down really well as well. Now while that glue is drying I'm going to take myself an acrylic block and I'm going to start adding a second layer of colour. Now I'm not going to be directly putting this onto the die cut here, I'm going to actually spritz some water just here and pick it up with a water brush. I prefer to use a water brush because I find a dry paint brush um, it just kind of soaks up the ink so it's handy if the bristles are already wet and you can control the amount of moisture going onto those bristles. So I'm just going to pick these up and I'm going to now just start painting through the die cut through here, that really sort of thickened ink. Now what you'll see is happening is that ink is going onto the die cut and it's being resisted. If you've got your embossing in there it should be resisted quite well. So just popping, that. I'm scr literally scribbling, it's really really easy to do. You could even go in with a darker colour for this stage if you wanted. And don't worry about any mess at this stage. It will look much better in just a moment. And then I'm going to spritz with water quite quickly. And the beauty of that is the resisting leaves, it kind of forms um, like barriers for the ink so it can't move around quite as much this time and you'll, you'll actually get a really lovely effect where the ink pulls between the leaves. Um, it's subtle and you'll see it up close but it's really really pretty. Now by using those two layers of ink I've actually got a really lovely effect. I've got some blue greens coming through here and you'll see these more in a second. Now what I do is I take my heat gun and I warm these layers up and what you may find is that uh, the second layer, the layer that's underneath, 
has actually um, been kept clean as such and just heating it up has released the glue between the two so I've just lift that top layer that we embossed off the reason it's embossed is to resist all of that moisture and you'll find you've got a lovely clean die cut underneath but look at where the blue green has settled around those leaves that looks absolutely beautiful now you can keep the glossy layer on top if you wish but I find it looks better if you take that top layer off and reveal underneath now maybe you're wondering why do you need to do two layers if you're just going to remove it afterwards now if I was to do this with one layer glue it on then add my water and my ink and get that second layer effect where it's pooling around the leaves then I would just end up with this brown one becoming mushy, um, soggy, probably lifting up from the cardstock. By adding the heat embossed layer on top, this has just protected it while we do all these techniques. You can lift it off, off afterwards and you've got this wonderful effect. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. I'd love to hear if you give it a go. Now, as always, of course, I need to make this into a quick card and I'm going to bring in some of my stamps from the rest of the Spring Awakening collection. So along with this collection, we've got the wildlife stamps. I adore this owl. It is so beautiful. And he's going to sit absolutely perfectly in the center just here. So I'm first of all going to stamp the owl in a brown Versafine. This is vintage sepia or sepia, depends where you are and what you call it. Uh, I'm not going to actually stamp all of it. The bottom bit down here, the branch, is going to overlap the, the branches of the wreath. So I've just taken that away with a bit of wet tissue. So I'm going to press this down and oh that's perfect that's absolutely beautiful I don't think I need to do any more to that except go in with a black and I'm just going to add black ink around the eyes and the beak then use my tissue again and if I just show you here lift that up so hopefully you can see I'm just going to dab it's a wet tissue so it'll work well I'm just going to dab around the eyes there just to remove some of that ink certainly any harsh lines and then i can re-stamp around the eye area darkening that up and it just looks so beautiful there we go there we go and we've got the dark eyes in there i might just give that a little bit more of a layer over the body with the brown but you can use that technique with the uh, black eyes for Actually, anything, any different stamp where you want to add a little bit of a dark colour is really easy to do. So let's just pop that on there. Beautiful. How pretty does that now look? Isn't that stunning? Okay, so just a sentiment to finish this off. So within the Spring Awakening collection from Textures, I've got these beautiful die cut sentiments here. So we've got sheets of sentiments that are already written out for you, but we've also got the letters as well. And I'm going to use these to create a word that I wouldn't usually find within my stamps and dies. And there's a really simple mixed media card front. I'm going to pop this onto a card base. I've got my sentiment there, as you can see, stay in the die cut letters. And then I've used the word strong for my sentiments for all paper pack. I've just trimmed that out. And I've gone round the edge with this tool. This is actually for dressmaking. So it's a tracing wheel. Um, again, you'll find these um, really readily available any haberdashery shops anywhere like that will do them and I've just pierced around the edge uh, to give it the look of some really rough uh, double stitching so um, I really love that look and yeah so it's a really quick and simple mixed media technique that you can follow along with now if you do love mixed media techniques and you'd like to learn more I've got a fabulous mixed media technique video just here for you and this is taking you through my five step mixed media techniques so take a look at that and hopefully you'll learn some more take care everybody i'll see you soon